Oh, it's good blood here. In this video, we're going to replace a wheel cylinder. And I'll show you how to replace the brake shoes. All right, I've already taken the drum off. If you need help taking the drum off, look at my brake inspection video, my drum brake inspection video, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Things you're going to need. Some rags, I suggest some sort of like ice cream bucket or something to put under it to catch brake fluid as it comes out. It will Some will leak. Brake fluid is extremely corrosive. It will eat your paint. So don't get it on everywhere. You're going to need a line wrench that fits your wheel cylinder. In this case, it requires a 10 mil. Full disclosure here, I don't have a 10 mil line wrench. Ugh. So I'm having to use a 10 mil open. Be careful that you don't strip it. Hit it with some uh, penetrant on the back here, maybe an hour or so before you work on it to try to loosen it up. You're gonna also need a new wheel cylinder and shoes if replacing them. It's gonna look something like this. And there's where the line goes in. And that's your bleeder. You also need needle on those pliers and one or two flathead screwdrivers. And you're gonna need brake fluid that is appropriate for your vehicle. Uh, in this case, it's DOT3. This happens to be a 2001 Mitsubishi Eclipse. But they're, they're all gonna be somewhat similar. So this one is pretty dirty. It's been leaking a little bit and it's you can see it's got some nasty in there so I am gonna spray some brake cleaner on it go easy on your brake cleaner try not to get it on the pads or the shoes I've seen worse but this one is pretty bad So the springs on these are all going to be a little different, but it's the same general concept. Now my brake shoes here that I'm working on are fine, so I didn't have to replace those. If, again, if you saw my uh, inspecting brake shoes, drum brakes, you'll have already seen that. Now what I'm going to do, I need to be able to take this off. It's in here right now. There's a lot of pressure. So what I'm going to have to do is remove these springs. What I find easiest, and I say easiest, is brake shoes are a pain. I'm going to slide, wearing gloves, wearing eyeglasses or protective goggles, sliding my needle nose under here. And I am removing the spring at the bottom in this case. That allows the top to compress, theoretically. Hopefully you can see right here, I'm gonna remove the cap. What I'm gonna do, I'm using the box in. This is the bleeder valve. See my video on bleeding brakes, if you want more information on that. I'm gonna break that loose. Now a little bit of, uh, I actually heard air come out which is kind of funny. Apparently they needed bleated, bled. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm releasing some of the pressure. It's just dripping a little bit. <laughs> all right so i squeezed them in just a little bit i'm not sure that it, it went a little <clears throat> you may or may not need to do that on yours okay it's snug again now we got to remove these springs 
They are not, they are very tight. Since so this is the old one, I'm gonna leverage it. And there it's off. Remember how it goes, but if you forget, you can look at the other side. Another one back here, right here. That allows us to pull the shoes apart. So there are two bolts right here and here that hold it on. So using the 10 mil, we want to break loose the bolts that hold the wheel cylinder on. They shouldn't be that tight. Just breaking them loose a little. Okay, now. The brake line where it comes into the back of this wheel cylinder, that's where you really want to use that line wrench. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I'm going to have to risk using the open end and hope I don't strip it. I have hit it with the penetrant, so hopefully it's done its job. All right, we got lucky. Now, I don't want to take that one out. I don't want to take the bleeder out. I want to take these nuts off that are holding it in first, and you'll see why. I'll tell you why. When, if you, when you pull that brake line off, or even the bleeder, brake fluid is going to start coming out. If you got a socket that'll work on this, that's probably your quickest. But brake fluid is going to come out, and we don't want to dump as a bunch of brake fluid. I'm going to take the two bolts out. The two bolts holding this on are now gone. I had to tap it with a hammer to break it loose. The bleeder valve is still in there. Now, I'm going to remove the brake line from it. Okay, it's out. Take the new one. See how it's leaking? Take the new one, put it in here. Get the brake line reconnected so you introduce the least amount of air and lose the least amount of brake fluid. Woo, what a mess. Those will need to be lined up. Okay, now we're going to put these back in. So get them tight, but don't over tighten them. Don't strip it. Just a little 10, 10 mil bolts. Okay. Now I'm gonna remove the bleeder valve. I'm removing the bleeder valve because I don't have access I don't have enough room to tighten the line with the bleeder valve, valve in. And again, get it good and tight, but not, don't strip it. I can put the valve back in. There, you're not losing fluid anymore. This thing, quite a mess. 
So there you can kind of see how these work. Now I am going to turn this all the way in. They turn the opposite directions on each side. I re-greased this. This is where it adjusts the brakes. So put a little more grease in there. And I put grease on the threads there. Try not to get too much on that. Now I'm putting this back in place. Clean hands-ish. Move my brake shoes back up, out, and in. So we got everything where it should be. Now the springs. This is this is the fun part. If you've got a brake tool, then that's best. Okay, remember which spring you had that goes where. This one was the black one in this case. Got it right there. Come on. There. Of course, that was the easy side. We've got this all the way in and we've got this bottom loose so that we can bring the top in as far as as close as it'll go make putting these on as easy as it can be now it's not it is a some of these are real challenge a rake tool can definitely help so i've got this side in i used this and hooked it brought it over needle nose right here pull it a little it's now right there probably an angle you can't see and I am now there we go now it's in and make sure that the hooks are all the way in Now we have this one, it goes in the same hole on that side. This one. Come on, don't fight with me. Make sure you don't get yourself hooked on these, they will hurt. All right, try it from the top. What I want to do is get the point of the nose in there, okay? Now I'm bringing the spring in. And sometimes it just doesn't want to go. Okay. All right, well, sometimes it just almost goes by itself. All right. Make sure that the springs aren't affecting the adjustment. Now we have to do the bottom. Put the bottom in this little spot. Using the needle nose. Behind that, hook there. Now that one's on. Now your brake shoes 
are all in. We didn't have to take them off. The only, really, the only thing we didn't do are these two spring clips holders, which are really simple. If you want to take, there is a tool for it, but you can take a pair of pliers and push in and turn. The other, this, the pin is back here. So hold a, hold a finger on the back to keep it from turning with your pliers, some regular pliers, grab it like so, push in, turn, and that's all there is to it. So we could have easily taken that off, but we didn't have to. But that's how you would change the, the shoes. Exact same process. Make sure everything is back where it belongs. We're going to trial fit the drum. The brakes are all, the shoes are adjusted all the way in. So this should easily turn. You remember where, where this was? So we're going to start turning it out. And we're gonna stop a little bit shy of where it was. And we're gonna test the drum as we go. Yeah, it might get stuck. And this is how you adjust your brake shoes. By the way, what happens, these adjust by themselves. When you go, when you drive backwards and you hit the brake hard enough, it's gonna cause it to click. And it'll, so that slowly spreads the shoes out. That's how they stay adjusted. There's also a window in mo behind here in most of these where you can adjust them with the drum on. But we don't need that since we have full access right here. And by the way, it's a pain in the butt without the right tool to do that. Okay. We're feeling just a little bit of resistance, turning it forward. So we should be really close. Uh, yeah, it's a little boring. There we go. That's some resist, that's good resistance there. Just enough. Or I know it's dragging at the moment. Okay, so we're good there. Double check your bolts on the wheel cylinder and then we will start the brake fluid part. This is how I bleed the brakes. You can uh, look at my video for bleeding brakes to see how I made this and everything. And this particular one, I put the hose, the, the bleeder valve was larger, so I used a slightly larger hose, slid the smaller one in. I have the box end on the bleeder valve. What I'm gonna do here, I have made sure that my master cylinder is full of brake fluid. I am now going to loosen the bleeder valve. Okay. Now, you can't see it, but some came out right here. That means I know that it's cracked enough for some to come out. And if you watch here, I'm gonna go in the car and I'm gonna pump the brakes about five times and you're gonna see fluid coming. This is this hose going in here is under that level of that brake fluid. Oh, wait. Make sure you got the uh, brake drums on before you touch the brakes. All right, now I'm going to pump the brakes. Back nine. Slowly.
as you can see fluids come up all the way in I'm gonna check for air bubbles now I'm gonna go check well let me just show you so I did wipe the cap off and everything pumping five times has dropped it a fair bit it's a little over halfway this is a decent sized brake cylinder I'm now pouring brake fluid and I'm topping it back off all right clean brake fluid that matches dot three that was in it now start the cap a little bit I'm gonna pump it two more times just to make sure I got all the air out of course the bucket was in the wrong place so some some brake fluid may come out uh, because you've got the bleeder valve cracked that can force some fluid out from the threads of the bleeder valve so now we're good I have some resistance but not too much I've now tightened the bleeder valve what I do is I pinch this pull it off try to get it higher than the bottle so it runs in and down into the bottle that is some nasty brake fluid that was in there yeah it's not apple juice that's not even used apple juice that's nasty so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry all this off make sure it's completely dry then I'm gonna push on the brakes fairly hard I'm gonna make sure I have a brake pedal and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna I'm gonna come and check behind this and make sure there's no fluid leaking out of it you don't want fluid leaking and you're gonna want to check the master cylinder make sure that it is still topped off after driving it again make sure that you're not leaking okay it's not leaking so we should be good after you put the tires on set it down start it be sure you check the brake make sure you have brake before you start moving also something I forgot to mention if in order to, you want to have the parking brake off so have it in gear or in park so it won't roll and have a chalk in front but you can't have the parking brake on or your uh, drum will not come off because it's engaged so I hope that was helpful so please like subscribe comment and good luck with yours